Now, bringing it back to kind of our conversation a little bit earlier, where you're saying some people are kind of leaving the genre and they're doing their own thing. Obviously, we saw uh, Casper's tweet where he mentioned um, saying, hey, come over to the side, piano's nice, we're making hits. I think a lot of people were also kind of feeling a little some other type of way with regards to that, obviously because um, the, 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 the culture and the genre kind of also has this purest thing about it. Like, you can't leave, you need to rip the game 24 hours. You know what I sure. mean? And I'm like, okay, well, maybe he wants to explore a different side to him. Is he married to hip hop? Is he supposed to stay there forever? Is that the, the, the conversation we're having? There's no way Casper's left hip hop. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. He's going with, he's following the money trail. That's what he's following. I have a problem with that. Okay. Not following the money trail, but I do have a problem with, with the way Casper's done what he's done. Okay. And, and the way he said what he's done. I'll explain to you why. Episode of the podcast, yes, and we've got the correct Sia back in the studio today. Yo, um, shout out for the last week's episode. Yes, Sia said, he, he sent me a message. Said I gave you guys a hot episode there on podcast. You no, know, he made it his own episode because you know Sia can talk. He of comes course. and then he took an hour, twenty minutes, just chatting about his own personal grievances. That's what he did. Oh, oh, about the show? No, oh, just, just yeah. hip hop. <laughs> Well, here's another guy with his personal <laughs> grievance saying that we took four season seasons to four. We only had guests on our first season. Scoop. Hey, let me leave you there. Yeah, please. <laughs> please. I need you on my <laughs> I say, ah. yes. We don't need that. We don't need that smoke. Anyway, welcome to a hot episode of Popcast. Shout out for joining us, Switch. Really appreciate yes. it, bro. Shout out, shout out for having me. Shout out, yes. yes. Shout out, Joe. He's very quiet and said, that man paces the whole damn studio. <laughs> that's how he is all but the that, time. But that's his vibe. You know how D is. You know how it is. Um, DJ Switch, thank you for joining us. Thank you, girl. Uh -huh. Thanks for having me. On this uh, cold winter's morning, Morning. We are out at Game on Africa. Uh, we are in Marlboro, if I'm not Q. mistaken. No, we're in Q. We're yeah. in Q, yes. So Game on Africa in Q. Come through, check it out. It's basically like a gaming home. There's arcades here. There's video games. There's board games. I was blown away by the fact that they actually have board games like chess and 30 seconds and Jenga and the like. That's, like, yeah. that's for you to try and, you know, for antisocial, they're trying to what get you to socialize. What do you mean antisocial? No. They're trying to get you to social. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. okay. Yeah, those you are know? social games because yeah. this one is you by yourself. <laughs> I don't know about five more, Baba, you know? Yeah, I think I do you get, you know, that's the real one. That's the real one. Yeah, you see, you can see Switch is excited. Switch is mad. This excited. is a throwback. This is where this is where you grew up. Fact, I'm just excited to see you guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, COVID has been keeping us away from one another. I'm just excited to see you know some people out here. Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen in a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's okay. Good to see you too, Switch. Yeah. When last did you bump on a, on an arcade? That's exactly it. I was at some one of these parties, you know, these drinking parties. Of course. And they had these other arcade vibes like this, but you know, this morning, yo, and I was whacking those on, on uh, Street Fighter. Yo, even Tekken, boy. Yo, 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 which one is you? Which one is you? you know? Those things are so old subscribe. school. <laughs> no, man, you get them on PS also. What's wrong with you guys? Yeah, no, no, no. I know the games, but I wasn't really like a geek about them. I just know the games because I grew up having like a Sega. Okay, you were the Pac-Man. You know? No, yeah, yes. On the arcades, I only played Pac-Man. Oh, snake, oh, snake. That was the only oh, one that I played. Snake, man. Ah, snake. Okay. <laughs> he switch. He's making me out to be a Popeye here. Anyway. <laughs> um, so come through, check it out. Game on Africa out in queue. They also um, apparently hire out some of the equipment here. So if you're having a children's party or if you're having a drinking party, whatever the case I is, that's the way to you go. can also uh, um, hire out one of the arcades. So you, can, you can check it out on Game on dot africa that is their website anyway we're obviously here to chat about the things that do the things in the, the entertainment streets um this week um we got news about one of our biggest entertainment houses being sold to a car dealership 
Ticket Pro Dome? Ticket Pro Dome is closed. Where are we going to go to see our international artists? I think now is the time where I think promoters have to, you know, think outside the box. What about the Sun Arena? Sun Arena only takes 10,000. The Ticket Pro Dome used to take 20,000 people. And Standard Bank is a bit... Uh, we're not, we're not going to Standard Bank. We're not, why are you not going to Standard Bank? We're not going to the arena there. Why? Uh, but why not Standard Bank, though? Uh, it's smaller also. I, th- I don't think it takes, takes 20,000 people. I, you must realize for a promoter, they need to also make their money back if they're going to bring an international artist. So if you're paying that amount, you need to sell the tickets. And the Standard Bank, uh, also the sound would, would never be like proper there. Is that the one that they had uh, Pharrell and Snoop at? Yes. Yeah, yeah just the, uh, the sun was never really like the one for me at Standard Bank uh, and the organization. I don't know what. Maybe I feel like I need to be enclosed to feel like yeah, it's feel going on. Team, I don't know. You know. But yeah, the history of the Ticket Pro Dome mm-hmm. and 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 what what it leaves behind is crazy, ne? It's insane. I think also for from a hip hop perspective, obviously Casper Nova is filling up the door. Yeah, the only one to do it. Yeah, the only, it's and crazy. no one else is gonna get a chance to do this. He's got that he's got with the one music still. festival. Yeah. And also, as a DJ, he goes down yeah. as one of the people sure. that has done his Black thing. Black coffee. In it. Yeah. yeah. What was um, your What was your best hip hop concert? There. Yeah. Whew, so many. Um, Wayne, so many. I was Jay Z. Jay Z. Fifty. And definitely Casper Dog, like that yeah. was that was monumental. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's he's got rights to it now. You yeah. can say I yeah. am the guy, yeah. the only guy the to only fill up guy. the dome. That was fucking crazy. That is at crazy. that time, exactly. Even now, even now, yeah. If you, if you think about, it, even if it would happen now, it would be something big, and he did it then. Yeah. You know, it was really, really a fucking dope thing. Yeah, man. I oh. think I think just um, the memories. Everybody who knows how big the Ticket Pro Dome is has played for entertainment industry is just yeah. madness. I think also for me, from a performance perspective, um, performing out at the Dome has also just been one of those where it's like, sure. it's not going to happen again. You know what I mean? Travis Scott. Travis Scott. Oh. Drake. See, no. Now oh, you're oh, oh, you're, you're awake now. now. Okay. 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 <laughs> no, I'm your caller. Huh? I'm your caller, dog. Yeah. Don't cry now. No. Don't cry. No. <laughs> Oh. Uh, it's painful, it's painful. But it's um, and it, and it's crazy because now obviously We Buy Cars is a very big like brand with regards to reselling and buying car, uh, sold car, well used cars and selling cars. And for them to buy that venue, they're gonna be the second biggest, second car dealership in the world. Mm. Purely by having that space. Mm. So for them, they're also making their own history. And they're like, ah, okay, we see you entertainment. We are now world record <laughs> situation. Well, if they're smart, they can still cash out on it. If they're smart. What do you mean? They can still cash out on that venue. Oh, as in like hire it out for events? Yeah, oh yeah, just, just drive just the cars, the cars out, out. <laughs> and open it up. Oh, yeah. they shot Top Gear there, guys. Yeah. The Jeremy and all of them were in there. there. I was there. The gaming expo is there. I mean, so yeah, you're telling me the smiley. I think, I think they really pushed out here for a reason, boy. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's serendipitous that you should be here during, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Ticket Pro. Okay, use cars, whatever. Uh, sure. what, what, what's the place? That's getting it? Uh, we buy cars. We buy cars. cars. Yeah, so I guess, you know, that's what you're going to go there for now. No longer... No longer sitting in traffic outside in I'm North sure Cape. the residents are happy. Yo. <laughs> Yo, because that place used to be a mess. We'd literally sit there for hours trying to get into Sorry. the venue. And out. And yeah. out. Remember when you unless you got an escort. Oh. Unless you got an escort. Like you always yeah, you have know? to time it as well. Be like, okay, the concert's ending. Okay, let's leave maybe now and run to the car. Otherwise, mm. this traffic is going to mess you up for mm. another two hours. But uh, beautiful memories, man. Shout Damn out to, right. to, to, to the team that were, were putting the events together at that place. I think it was... Yo, it was crazy. But... It is what it is. It's business, man. I'm sure. I, I don't know. Do you think there will be someone who's going to invest in a um, a venue of such nature going forward? I think now that there's a need, they probably will try. I know someone will. You know, there's always someone who's got extra coins who, can, who wants to do well, things like that. if you got the jab or not. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, ticket price is going to go up if you don't got a jab. Exactly. A passport. You know, I mean, the states are charging $1,000 to get in if you don't got no passport. Exactly. But why so are they letting now? people in without a jab also? Well... It is what it is. You know, you got your views, you got, I got my views, you know? Hey. Without a what? Without the, the vaccine. Oh. Let's just leave that story. <laughs> we Let's don't want to get into the I vaccine don't conversation. Into that. yeah, but you're going to be wanna... paying. You're going to be paying because that's what they're charging overseas. They're saying, yeah. with or without, we're going to charge you accordingly. 
Yeah. Yes. And I think yes. those rules might come into play. I know for travel, it's going to be a big one. Yes. yes. And yeah. then of course, it's going to be like the, the, the yellow fever card that you're going to have to travel yeah. with now. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is, essentially. You know? Yeah. But I mean, we'll leave that for another day, yeah, right? Yeah, that's sure. a bigger conversation on another scale on its own. But I guess this is where San Arena needs to pick up you know, what, what hey. we're leaving. And also, I think it's also going to challenge um, promoters to see if they can fill up the stadiums now because they always used to lean on the dome because it was easier to fill up the dome as opposed to going to the stadium. So the stadiums are going to have to come back. the stadiums. I know. I'm buying the stadiums. But the stadiums used to hold us down before the dome. Exactly. Before the yeah. dome. So, and it's the only biggest venue closed. Exactly. You know? So that's another thing. But I mean, yeah, it's interesting times. We're going to move forward. I mean, like I said, it's good to see y'all. It's good to see you, man. Hi. How you doing, Mr. Hip Hop? Uh, yeah, well, I got a new name now. Mixtape King. Oh. Mixtape King. Beep, 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 beep. Boom. Top the bomb. Mixtape King. Tell us That's why you're going to be calling yourself Mixtape King. Well, first, we got, we got a new mixtape coming out uh, with uh, some homies from Ekapa. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bravo LaRue, he's got his homies from uh, Ekai Licha. It's called uh, Rise of Estrato. Sure. And uh, we're going to just mess it up. And I'm, I'm claiming to be the mixtape king. You know, one thing about Switch, and I remember I said this um, to somebody else the other day. I was like, yo, oh, Switch, we are releaser. Mm-hmm. If there's one person who doesn't get tired of the studio and releasing the songs, it's this man right here. You know, and I think, you know, it's, we're coming to this point where we're like, why are we scared, man? Mm. But all this time, all this incarceration, you know, we would all this time. Why are we holding back? You know what I mean? Yeah. I hear you. We got all this time. Mm. So if you got a home studio, Go put out the work, you know what I mean? Yeah. Put it out. I mean, all these kids are putting out music back to back, like nonstop. So why are other people waiting for the right time? Yeah. I'm just going to do my thing. I'm not waiting for number one. I'm just going to put it out. And, um, you know, working with some homies from Cape Town, uh, Bravo LaRue uh, and all these homies, we got a mix set coming out. And we're not doing it like a typical one. It's more storytelling based. Um, it's very interactive, you know. Uh, shout out to Jay Period. That's where the idea came from. And I've always wanted to do it like this. And um, homie was just like, yo, here. I mean, homie gave me a full mixtape in a week. Mm. Shout out. I've been waiting for verses from January. Dude, mm. I've, been working, I've been waiting since last year <laughs> for verses. So that's what, you know, I'm, I'm just like wondering, like, why is it that, you know, especially getting that when you're asking for a verse, why does it take that long? If you don't want to work with me, say, yo, Switch, I don't want to work with you. Yeah. You're Move outdated. On. And like, next shop. But I'll show you my track record. Mm. You know, I, there's something I can see in you. That's why I want to do it or work with you. It's not yeah. because of your hype, your clout. I don't care. If you can rap, you can do your thing, you can deliver, sharp. If the execution is there, sharp. But you're also like releasing, as you said, five mixtapes in five? Yeah. In the next five months, I'm going to do it. That's crazy. Do you know, Switch is it's... actually, Switch is one of those people, if I can actually bring it back to why I called him Mr. Hip Hop. Switch is one of those people who's been involved in like every facet of hip hop. Yeah. He's been a break dancer. Yeah. He's been a DJ. Yeah. You, I, I'm sure at some point you held a graffiti thing. And you I were, did try. Yeah, I know you I tried try, it out. Sure. He's that guy. He's also out there. You've rapped at some point, ne? Yeah. Well, Just one verse, Yana. He has in church. <laughs> I was doing it for, for Yeezy's reasons. He has. God, and, he has. And, you know I mean? and he's the DJ. <laughs> like, Switch is that guy who says every facet of you hip-hop, really, he I'm really inside. Loves it. He really, you really, really, really love I, it, bro. You know, I think, you know, you know and, and this is where... Just before we started this, um, mm. you know, we were having a, a conversation as to, you know, you were like, you know, you're not feeling it, like you're not here, like you're not, you're not being an advocate for hip hop no. now. Mm-mm. And I'm like, yo, I'm also seeing people leaving hip hop, and I'm also like, yeah, and they're sharp. Mm. Like if you vine, you vine. That probably means you weren't here for the long run. You know, for me, it's like if I get into this, I'm gonna get into this for long. You know, just before I came, I was thinking about like, like even Cozzy, like you left your corporate job to become a DJ. Sure. And look how far, that's why Biggie says, never thought that hip hop would take you this far. Yeah. So why leave it? Yeah. If it's meant for you, you're in. The stars are just there. Everything's aligned. So why leave it? Just stick it out, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think, I mean, I look, think for, 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 I mean, I'm not an artist. But you, you're an ambassador, Baba. And you are in it. You are in it. Like your blood, it's, it's yeah, in your blood. Yeah. Like, like we also speak. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, and this, t- this conversation just took a whole turn. It wasn't even supposed to go this way. <laughs> Don't worry, we're you know? in Don't it. Don't worry. Um, for me, as I was saying to you, as an ambassador of hip-hop and as a person that was advocating for it, I was saying to you that I feel like I've done enough for it and I think that now 
I feel like I want to choose myself over it. Because for a long time, I neglected myself and the things that I wanted to do because of my marriage to hip hop. Mm -hmm. And I really put other people forward even before myself. And I even put the music and the genre before myself and my ideas. And I had that conversation with myself when I was doing that. And I said, come a time when I feel like now I want to dip into the bag of things that I want to express away from being attached to that hip hop guy. And I knew that time would come. That time has come. What I would not like is for hip hop to look at me like, dog, you can't go nowhere. Because I'm not saying I, I, I'm leaving or I can't go anywhere, but I'm just like... Refocusing. Be, be okay with me choosing myself over yeah. you. You know? Yeah. You know? And, and that doesn't come at, at, at a... I'm not, it's not animosity, it's not anger, it's not anything. It's just saying, I know good and damn well I have given my blood, sweat and tears for an aspect of... Because I'm not just hip-hop, that's another thing. Yeah. I'm so many things, but I, I put those things on a back burner for hip-hop. And, I, and I, I said to myself, when the time comes, I will put hip-hop on the back burner and put these things into the oh, forefront. Right. And that's what I really want to do, you know? But you see, like Scoop, you're, still, you're like an artist when they redefine themselves in terms of their music and themselves. It's the same thing, you know what I mean? you like, you're there and you're redefining like who you are in this space and yeah. it will speak through. If you had to release albums, it would speak through your albums. For sure. You understand? So what we're seeing and how you're portraying what you're doing, like going back to your roots, that's become ground level now. Yeah. And you're restarting. It's the same for everybody else. You understand? Yeah. Everyone's going to have to redirect and refocus onto what they do and what they say yeah. within their music, within their clothing, within their style, within what they do. Yeah. Because, you know, as much as we want this, you know, this shit to last forever, it doesn't. Yeah. But if you really live it and it's like some people only have this. Mm. Yeah. This is all they have. They have nothing else. Mm. Yeah. And you know what? <clears throat> I think there's also nothing wrong with wanting to explore other options or other parts yeah. of yourself because at the end of the day like you said you're not only just about hip hop yeah um and i and i say this to everybody else it's not necessarily only just to you i do think to kind of explore and play around with different things and different um aspects of yourself is also really interesting to kind of open people up to a different side of you because we also tend to be boxed too t too much so you just do when, one when people see you they just say i that one is just hip hop mm. we're going in another direction right. and it's like they don't think about you when 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 you want to do other things maybe you, you want to like for instance we're DJs but they won't look at us from a TV perspective they won't sure. look at us from a from a, a, a campaign perspective whether it's a lifestyle brand and not necessarily just right. hip hop you know what I mean right. mm -hmm. you know what I mean so for me I understand that and wanting to kind of explore now bringing it back to kind of our conversation a little bit earlier where you're saying some people are kind of leaving the genre and they're doing their own thing obviously we saw Casper's uh, tweet where he mentioned um, saying, hey, come over to the side, piano's nice, we're making hits. I think a lot of people were also kind of feeling a little, some other type of way with regards to that, obviously because um, the, 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 the culture and the genre kind of also has this purest thing about it. Like, you can't leave, you need to rip the game 24 hours. You know what I sure. mean? And I'm like, okay, well, maybe he wants to explore a different side to him. Is he married to hip hop? Is he supposed to stay there forever? Is that the the, the conversation we're having? He's a father. He's looking after his family. Mm -hmm. He's looking after you know what what's gonna put a, what's gonna put money into his pocket and what's gonna look after you know his kid. You know that's what he's looking after. You know what I mean? For some of us don't have kids. I'm saying well you know it's it's like well that's your that's your priorities. That's what your responsibilities are. You know he's a businessman. He looks at the business aspect of just it's the same like when I was a b boy. I looked at the business aspect of being a B-Wayne, so how I can take my love and make money out of it. Mm. That's what you want to do so you can sustain it forever. Mm. So it's not to say like he's left. There's no way Casper's left hip-hop. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. He's going with his, he's following the money trail. That's what he's following. I have a problem with that. Okay. Not following the money trail, but I do have a problem with with the way Casper's done what he's done. Okay. And, and the way he said what he's done. I'll explain to you why. When you have been living under this house that has taken care of you for such a long time. Helped you fill up the dough. And, sure. and a lot of things. Sure. A lot of things. Sure. You know? Now, lot, I'm putting it to you know, like, man perspectives. Now. You know? Yeah. When you've, when you've, when you've lived in this house that has taken care of you for such a long time and it's given you so much, 
And there are kids and people that are coming up in this genre because they want to follow what you've done, right? If you are successful in something and you... And I, okay, let me also add on the fact that you're a black guy as well on top of that, never mind anything else. You're also a black man. And you have the responsibility to make sure that when you sit at the top of the hill, there's a ladder at the bottom of you. People can climb and get to a spot as well. Yeah. Because these people, these are the people that helped you get to your spot. Yeah, of course, right. The, supporting this support, culture. Yeah. Now, the difference is, 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 is when he says he's leaving this because everybody can say it's about money. And he talks about the fact that uh, there's no politics on this side. If a song is hot, it's hot. Look, even in hip hop, people can sit on chairs and talk about you. But if your song is hot, the people will dictate that. Right. And so, so let's be honest. This is not about songs being hot or whatever. You know, this is about someone who is now, for whatever reason, feeling some type of way against hip hop because maybe they don't feel the type of music he was making. Then he's making his decisions for money. But he's putting it in a way that kills the future for the people involved in the culture that have supported him. Okay. He, 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 he's extinguishing the fire of the genre. And that puts the kids in it in a, in a tough position Correct. because they should eat from this because yeah. they also right. have something to say, like he did yeah. when they supported him. That's one. The second thing that I also want to talk about, and this is not me fighting. This is not me uh, trying to paint him in a bad light or whatever. I'm just speaking on what is and the way it comes across. He always talks about what's wrong with hip-hop and the people in hip-hop or what's wrong with it. Hip-hop is not something that lives by itself. It's people orientated. He's also a person in this culture, one of the forerunners of hip hop. There, there has been a lot wrong with him too. Yeah. And he can't even be human enough to see that. But he always talks about what's wrong with everybody else. But there was so much wrong with him and the way he conducts himself in the space of hip hop. And that's just what I want to say. And then when, when all of that happens, it's like, oh, no, 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 you know what? I've destroyed this genre now. I've made it so, um, so, <laughs> I've made it so, I've made it so not peaceful in this genre. I've made it to this genre to be something that it wasn't when I got into it. When I got into the genre, it wasn't like this. Now I got in here, I got my money out of it. I got to the top of the hill. Now I will shun it Let, and, and destroy the fire out of it and leave because of money. I want to add on to that, right? In the beginning, he fought just as hard as he's fighting to leave, right? He fought to be in it. He fought to be like, hey, I'm going to be the next big thing in hip hop. Yeah. And he proved it. Mm -hmm. But now he's fighting to, and just like you're saying, there's some kid coming up saying, Casper Nuvez, mm. I'm rapping because of Casper Nuvez, you know, Mr. Don Belito. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? I want to aspire to him because he's a rap artist and he's making it. And now the kids are like, oh, but this guy's fine to piano now. Yeah. So now where does that leave me? And, and, and it, also, it also questions even just how the rest of um, the entertainment industry kind of looks at us as well as a genre. Because then it's like, ah, oh, why don't you just leave just like that one left? Or just but, why don't you want to? And it's like, how? Okay, I'm allowed to experiment, but to completely like... Jump. Disregard an entire genre, I think, is a little bit. Uh, and just throw shit on it, just like yeah. Throw, you, like I, I don't mind you leaving. Yeah. Lil Wayne did a rock album. Yeah. Um, niggas uh, did a lot of things. Yeah, so I don't mind you, but the way in which you are hitting on this genre. Yeah. And 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 and, and that and, made and, you. Dog. That made you. It, 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 I think you got to be careful because I mean, for the next guy was to try and earn checks. You know, it's like, you know, it's and, not, and it, it, it can really, my thing is, this, that's what we need purists. Me, I'm a purist for hip hop. Shop. Yeah. I got nothing against piano. Piano's dope, man. I'll, I'll vibe with it. I'll have a couple. I'll vibe with it. Great stuff. You know, understand? Yeah. It's, it's good for what's happening in Sata. You yeah. know what I mean? It's a vibe. It's a movement. Great stuff. It's just like, come. 
There was a movement. There was a vibe. It was mm. there. Fight it's was still there. there. It's still there. Yeah. You understand? But I'm a purist. Who's going to hold down hip hop? Yeah. Who's going to hold down hip hop? Me, I'm a soldier. I've got, I've got my stripes here. You see, that's that's why even for me, I'm 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 also on the on the thought process of look, he can he can experiment yeah. all he wants. I don't mind experimenting. I experiment with my music as well. Sure. I'm not against him making music with different genres and, and having a good time. Just don't tweet and say, leave this thing, we must come the other side. Right. For yeah. me, that is a little yeah. half assed because it's like, dude, don't put it on what puts you in your position in the first place, one. And two, um, at the end of the day, you also need to be able to feel comfortable enough to come back to it. Because now, if he decides he wants to drop another hip hop song, we're all gonna look at him like how we will also be like, like choose. I think for yeah. me, it's more about choosing your words. You can right. by all means have a good time in piano for this season, and then when you come back to hip hop, you come back to hip hop. But shit right. on us like that. Don't say yeah. anything. It's just it, it just know? shows yeah. so much about someone's character, so much about someone's like thinking to, mm. to do such a thing. Yes, but I, all I can say is hip hop will never it's die. Like leaving, it's like leaving your wife. We're going to multiply. It's, like getting, multiply. it's like getting a divorce and, and instead of saying, yo, baby, it's been cool. I just don't feel it anymore. I'm out. You're going to leave and then you're going to shit on her. Like, yeah. and she, yo, we've been here for 20 years. Like, I, I built this house with you. Like, I took oh. care of your kids. Now you want to leave and you're just like, I ain't what do you mean? Like there was no value added to what you have today. Yeah. Anyway. I, it's tricky, tricky. Nah. Oh, nah. It is what it is. It's the state of hip hop. You know, I, you know, things change every day. And I think that's what we also need to be mindful of is that nothing ever stays the same. I'm sure when you were, when you were a people, it's not the same as what it is now. I mean, I mean, the evolution of, of what it was and what it is. I mean, like, you know, you move with it. You move with the time, you move with the sound. Um, but also, you must remember, you, no one owns it. Yeah, that's yeah. also true. You, you don't, that's, that's what also, mm. you can't be afraid. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Hip hop mustn't be afraid. No one owns it. Mm. Even I'm a piano, no one owns it. Mm. Yeah. No one can say, Mina and the guy. No mm. one owns it. It's, it it's, it's a viral thing that lives on its own. Yeah. Right? And if you want to take it there, then you take it there. But if you want to let it sink and die, then that's your thing because mm. you let it die yourself. Sure, is. You understand? So if you wanted to survive, you wanted to go, then yeah, that's people like, yo, but Switch is so hardcore. He likes this, you know, niggas rapping and stuff. And I'm like, but isn't that hip-hop? Don't you rap? <laughs> that's <laughs> you know, the point. Rap? Isn't that the point? <laughs> to battle, to showcase, to fight with the mic, mm. yeah. to show what you're about. And then when you want to diversify yourself, then cool, that's dope. You know what I mean? Mm. I, you know, I don't have a problem with you, you know, going all soft on your raps and that's fine. Mm. You know, that's, that's all about argument's sake. That's what shows you when you come here to deliver to prove your point. Yeah. That's what it's about. It's about proving your point. Why are you the best? Why are you the greatest? Yeah. Why should you know? Why must you listen? Yeah. That's it. You know what I mean? So, hip hop will never die. Some, some other Casper's coming. He's waiting. Yeah. He hasn't even sure. born yet. He's sure. coming and he's going to go, he's not going to fill up that dome. It's going to be a bigger venue. Yeah, sure. hey. understand. And then so, you know, those kids are coming, bro. And yeah. they're really coming. Like if you look at, at what's been put out, I mean, there is kids coming. Mm -hmm. Yo, and and there the kids are kids coming. Kids are coming with the fire, and I think that's what also excites me is that you know how people always have this conversation like, oh, is it dead? Is it not? No, it's not dead because then we wouldn't have the likes of Blackie, wouldn't mm -hmm. have Flame, wouldn't have Costa, wouldn't have Twenty Five K, wouldn't have Tato Soul. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they are kids that people are paying attention to and they want to hear that music. I never seen over twenty. They're gonna be like, you forgot names. <laughs> so many new come names. On, there's come so on, come on. There's so names. many new names, but it's fine because. The fact that Lucas we can mention raps. the fact that we can mention so many means that we're still good. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're yeah. gonna be all right. We're gonna, we're gonna be all, be all right. we're gonna sure, be all sure, right. Sure. All right, something else that also kind of caught my eye this past week, and it was a conversation that was also kind of trending on Twitter. Um I'll bring it in uh, with uh, Don Design bringing in his Monday to Monday new designs. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He's got a new um, range called the Mahasman range where he's paying tribute to Lebu Matosa. So mm -hmm. he's got the Lebu Matosa t-shirts, um, throwbacks. I think that's really dope because yeah. obviously anybody who knew what a legend Lebu Matosa is, it kind of lends to the brand that she is. So what I want us to kind of chop about as well is how when Don kind of came out at first with his Monday to Monday um, brand. Everybody was like, oh, okay, but what's going on? Because he's like rearranging the, the design of the t-shirts or renaming the, like it was, I don't know, he would call them funny names. I forgot half of the name, <coughs> but basically rebranding some of the, the, the fashion. Mm -hmm. And a big conversation that happened this past week on Twitter was also about how Galaxy Boy is kind of doing the same thing, mm. where um, they're making 
some of the the, the Louis Vuitton kind of um, luxury, luxury, Lux brands, yes, yeah. luxury brands, but re re energizing them in his. Um, in the new designs that he's got out. Like some of the t-shirts have the Gucci mm. um, designs. Yeah. He's got some Louis things, but it's all under Galax Boy. And I don't think people really understand exactly what he's doing and whether it's allowed in fashion. Mm. Maybe you can kind of weigh in on something like that, Scoopy. They they call it bootleg fashion. Yeah. Right? Um, Dapper, I mean, Dapper Dan was probably one of the first guys to do it by taking... Um, by taking leather and really painting the luxury brand logos on it yeah. and then cutting it in jackets and pants that weren't supplied by Gucci or MCM. That's where the origins of this thing comes from. In streetwear, it got to a point where guys would then print a t-shirt with the LV logo and say, um, they'll, they'll, it'll, the LV would stand for something else, yeah. you know? Uh, that's how Don did it in, in the beginning. Yeah. We'd have uh, logos like Celine with Tupac. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and so on and so forth. So the 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 style of making the t-shirts is to really juxtapose a very high-end brand with street morals and street culture. So that's why it's called bootleg. And it was done for it was done by by streetwear dudes. I saw Galaxy Boy using the the Gucci colorway. Yeah. yeah. For Galaxy Boy. And I don't know, it's tough. Why is it tough now? It's tough because I would expect, I would expect Galaxy Boy to put in some more into it because they are a more established brand. Okay. You understand? They are a more established brand with more with more links to manufacturing. Okay. More sure. links to be able to get designers. You know what I'm saying? Um, they can go a little bit further out of their out of that bootleg box than maybe like a Don design. Mm. You understand? They've got more resources than a Don design. You understand? Yeah. So on a personal level, I would expect them to just go a little bit further. But on a design level, maybe they just feel like they just want to do it too. And is it allowed? Yeah. Mm. It is. Of course. Yeah. You know what I mean, saying? props to Galaxy Boy. I mean, yeah. they went, they went, they went lux for real. Yeah. yeah. Like when I was shook, I was like, yo, that's some lux higher grade. Yeah. That's premium. That's premium design. What, what do they do? They, I saw I what I only saw was the, the green and the red. No, yeah. but there was the bag. No, the they, did, they did they did the, the, the small uh, the small um it handbag. Like, yeah, it's a handbag. It looks like a, the, the Louis bag basically. Mm. And the they've also got the the, the the tote bag, the big one that, yeah. the, that all the ladies wear. Yeah. Um so they've got a Galax Boy one as well. They've also got the shoes as well. Yeah. Um so I think this range that he had released was purely to say, I'm doing a bootleg range. Okay. Because their previous stuff has always been original designs. Yeah. So I think for this, he was just like, okay, let me do a bootleg range, shake up the the, the industry just a little bit, yeah. and then maybe he'll go. Because then he started releasing some of, some original stuff even after that. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, think I just th I just I just think people just maybe don't really understand what bootlegging is because even the likes of, for instance, like a um, a Supreme didn't, did it at some point, didn't they? No, was it that, Louis did it. That was a that was a that proper was a collab. collab. Oh, it was a proper collab. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, All but right. I mean, he's setting himself apart though. Mm. He's really going to say like, I can go high end if I want to. Yeah. If they bring a Galaxy Boy suit out, would you buy it? Because of really. See, now we're talking. You understand what I'm saying? No, 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 wait, 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 right there. <laughs> right there. Now, <laughs> tell me something. Would you rather have him go Gucci, bootleg, or would you rather have him do, if he was going to go out there with it? Imagine him releasing some suits. I think it would be clean. But also, the bootleg range actually sold out. I think that's what Ooh. people don't get. Oh. Like it's been selling. That's yeah. crazy. Like people are buying it. Yeah, I think the people who are them. wiling about it on socials, I think are the people who just don't understand how bootleg mm. fashion works. Yeah. And that's why I wanted us to have the conversation. But I mean, yeah. for him to go that to that extent, I mean like, wouldn't you mind having a look like, and if you put the two next to each other, and you'd be like, actually, the Galaxy Boy does look way better than the LV. Huh? I'm just saying, if you had to sit right next to it, you look <laughs> at it and you look at it, <laughs> and you look at it and you'd be like, Maybe. maybe because yeah. on a local level, you'd be like, maybe actually. I guess I feel you, ne? But because you might be like, actually, but if I wear, if I rock the LV, then maybe I'm gonna get more respect. But if I'm like with this one, mm. if the designer's a little bit more away from what it's yeah. supposed to be, you know what things like this, you know, with moves like this, ne? As much it's as it's bold, bro, it's, it's bold. It's bold, and I respect it. With the moves like this, this is what the problem is with moves like this. 
what happens when there are now five other kids who are going to think, let me not design. Let me now do a replica of a Gucci logo. Because it will sell. Mm. Because I don't have to now strive to make something that's original. Because it worked for him. And I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm just saying the downside of when this like becomes like, oh, shit, this is a thing. Oh, I can just replicate and people will buy. You, you get what I'm saying? But yeah. then that means you're not a designer. Then it means you're not no, a I honestly think he's just doing it as a range. As a range. I think it's right. just he's doing this because yeah. he was like, let me do a bootleg range because he did release original designs yeah, afterwards. Before, before, before and, and after. after. Yeah. So I think for him, it's just his experiment for now and he's going to move on after this range when he feels like he's done with it, he's done with it and he moves on. What if he continues to do a bootleg range of different high-end brands every season? Is that, is that okay with you guys? I think that's cool. I think if the stuff is dope, I mean, the thing is, the thing is, it's selling out because it looks good. Yeah, it's high quality. And yeah, I think it also, it also, it also gives people who can't afford the higher end brands mm. to wear something like that that still looks like it's quality. Well, yeah. it is quality, and still be able to rock it it's with, on the with same swag. Level. It's you know on the I same mean? level. All right, with that, we are still um, obviously chatting entertainment, chatting about brand new music that's dropped this past week. Uh, before we get into the actual deliberation, um, obviously we saw twenty five k dropped. Peli Makaveli yeah. mm. put some bombs on us. It's Vitora Kachia. I got a mixtape for him too. It's <laughs> which... <laughs> King of the mixtape, DJ. You better know. You better recognize coming out. We're dropping at the rise of his track. Uh, coming out. I'm telling you. See, you know, Tyler, guy... the, Tyler the creator just hired DJ Drama. Exactly. To do all the exactly. shout outs in his album. So maybe you might be timing the right <laughs> movement to come back with the mixtape. Shit, my nigga. I've been you know on time. <laughs> yeah. I've been on time. Yeah. This guy just came to advertise himself. Anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Best recognize the mixtape king DJ Switch. If you don't know now, you know, suckers. That's Ooh. the DJ K Slay shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Boom! Dead the storm. Yo, now we can call it looting storm. Ah, uh, mm. come on. <laughs> You know, no, hey, moving on. We're moving on. Anyway. <laughs> I was deep. Actually, no. <laughs> yeah, please. Anyway, all right, so uh, 25K dropped this album, Peli Makaveli. Um, I think it's one of the most anticipated albums because when he came out of Culture Vulture, everyone said, who is this dude? Yeah. Um, and finally, we got to hear a full body of work, which I think, for me, um, amazing work. I think Pretoria needed also because they've got this big ride with piano going. And then they said, okay, here's another one, hip hop, right. say pop, you know what I mean? Um, but I think... He also came through with the fire and it was not too long, not too short, perfect. Mm. Um, how are you feeling about 25K's brand and how he's kind of brought himself into, into, the, into the game? I think he's, he's, he's got his own formula. He's working with what he knows best. Mm. You know what I mean? He's not trying to be extra. He's not trying to be over and above. He's just running his lane mm. and he's sticking to it. Mm. And he's getting this. People are, are pushing him. They're giving mm. him that higher power to say like, yo, listen to the homie. You understand? Yeah. And he's getting natural and organic support. Yeah. So I don't think, you know, he's, he's going to be good. Yeah. He'll be good, you know, it, and it's, it's organic, it's natural. People are supporting him since even though the track was tight tape, you understand? Yay. And that's the thing, like, you know, up until now, he's getting the, the, you know, the support because he took his time, you know, he, he wanted to release on, on, his, on his terms. Yeah. And he got the right features, he got the right music videos out, and it's working for him. Yeah, what were you saying about the, the interview he did this past week? Yeah. With the other homie that was here last week. Yeah, with the other Zia. With the other Zia, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think, you know, um, yeah, I mean, you know, the story that come up, it's like, it was almost like an American kind of come up, you know, homie selling. And I mean, that's where the names come from, you know, like, you know, and I'm not saying that, like, yo, go do that. Please don't. Yeah, I'm just please. saying, but that's his story. And that's what get him to where he needed to get to. Mm. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's the beauty of the stories. Like we, and just like what Stogie said, it's like the stories of how these, you know, the come up, like how it happens. We hardly hear these mm -hmm. stories mm -hmm. of how you actually got there. Mm -hmm. Even the way Jera spoke about MT. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I didn't know that. We didn't hear about the 25,000 versus the 500K. We didn't hear about that. So this is another story that we can talk about and be like, yo, actually that's how he actually came out. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know. And that's like that's what, what we really have to embrace. Yeah. Not just like, oh no, this guy just came last week. Yeah. And now he's and now he's his shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, what did he actually do? Because that's what most artists came. They're like, I'm gonna drop into scoops, the DM, be like, yo, put me on. I'm the hottest shit. Here's my link. Mm. Yo, cousin, here's my link. Listen, 
Tell me what you think. We don't care what you think. You shouldn't even care what we think. Showcase. You shouldn't yeah, care sure, what we think. Just sure. go out and work this off. And that's it. Sure. And I think that's what he done. He just went and said, I'm going to get Etheridgeville and they're going to support me first. Yeah. And once Etheridgeville has me, mm. then the rest of, the, of Josie will get me. That's and all. even if Josie don't get me, at least I got access to Exactly. Yeah. I've always said that, you know, yeah. whenever, whenever kids come to me, they're like, yo, what do I need to get on? Or how do I need to get myself in the game? I'm like, dude, if you are not buzzing in your hood, where you come from, where your people are supposed to be supporting you from, like the trenches, how am I going to pay attention to you? Because you're also not making me pay attention if you're not 100%. making your friends pay, pay attention. Yo, if you're going to hit me so, up in the DM, you need 30 tracks first before we listen. <laughs> That's the bottom line now. I will switch to Pillar now, you see. Track record. I... <laughs> Yo, keep it a mix in. <laughs> wow. So, so Scoop, um, you also chatted to him this mm. past, well, a couple of weeks back. Um, and I know you're very big on energy. Yeah. Um, I haven't I haven't met 25K personally. I've al always just been a fan of the music. So for me, I can't really speak on that. I can only speak on the album. But you obviously having to, to pick that up. How are you feeling about the man and how what he's going to do for the game. I really dig that guy. Uh, going on such a long run, like in the game, you get to understand and, and, and maybe like always get to tell when someone is coming from a real place and not a promotional place or not a, I put a face on when I go outside type vibe. 25K is genuine, you know? He's a real dude and he doesn't oversell himself. Mm. He, he doesn't try and be something that he's not. Mm. And the crazy thing is, it's almost like Guli. Like, I never got to hear all of Guli's rhymes. Like, I don't get to hear all of 25K's rhymes because of the, 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 the language. Yeah. But the, the way it resonates with me, mm. it's, it's remarkable, you know? And, and that's the same thing with 25K. Like, I can't hear everything he's saying, but every time he does say something, I'm just it's, it sounds so real. Yeah. And another thing that I was telling Switch before you came, Kazi, offline, was that the, the difficulty with, with me and hip-hop right now is like, I don't know whether it's because I've been listening to sport for so long, it is just hard to believe okay. people don't sound believable mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. Like, niggas do sound believable when they were broke. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they were telling so, real stories. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, 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 and I, I'm not going to say money changed everything or whatever because I do think you can still do it with money. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, the believability of it for me like really like escaped, you know? And with him, it's different. Like I just like, yo, shit is... I actually feel like there's so much more real stories that we're not being told. Okay. So I like that about him. I like the fact that he took his time. Mm. Like, normally, the usual artist... Having dropped that one single that made everybody like go, whoa, would have would have like tried to be in our faces. Yeah. Would have like tried to like be Instagram and do all these other things that everybody else already does. But he really worked his own route. Um, I love the fact that he's got Zuchi Coke Dope on production. Zuchi, I'm not gonna say he slept on, but he's not he's not treasured mm. as he should be. He's not slept on. But he's not treasured as he should be. He's a great producer and he, he's a great talent. And, uh, you know, not 25K have a, a dope, like, synergy together. So I like, I like what they've done. I haven't listened to the album yet, but I will. And, yeah, it's just nice to, to have someone who's not going to say the things you hear all the time. Who's not going to use the same slang as everybody uses all the time. Because sometimes it just gets a bit much. So him being different from that Archidgeville corner and coming across like that is nice. I like what Switch said about background. Yeah. They all, these kids all focus on being like what they've seen. They neglect the pureness and the beauty of their story. Mm. And that's why like pop, pop, pop radio is something that I really love because that's where we get to like hear yeah, the, the stories, stories. Yeah. of the come up, you know? Yeah. And we, we're going to get 25 and pop radio, don't worry about no it. No doubt, <laughs> you know? So everybody, and it's, it's because of the gram, you know? It's because of you see and you shit, I can't wait till my square looks like that. Yes. Yeah. And the, what, you, what you do at the time when you should be focusing 
on really building your fan base with your story, when you get that one single, you're already focusing on making your square look like such and such. Now you've lost yeah. all your appeal. Yeah. You know, so shout out to 25. I mean, man. also, he got, you know, he got reset at the right time. Yeah. He got, you know, he got empty at the Yo, right time. That you empty know? feature. So, is it hard? So I'm just saying that, you know, his album was around. Also, those guys' albums, they are more pure. They're more themselves. Yes. Mm. So the synergy is on that high level. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's therefore, you know, that, that, that project's being pushed on pure energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not being pushed by whatever is going on in yeah. the background. So I think, you know, it came out, got those other homies also on, which, which, which makes it a little bit more special. Yeah. You know what I mean? Love so, it. Love no, that. 25K and a self. Special. Yeah. All right. So we are going to go on to more special people that we've got for the Flaming Hat or Flaming Nut. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be hot enough <laughs> or not? So big shout out to Doritos, obviously, for, you know, making sure we check whether the music is Flaming Hot or Flaming Not. You can also join us in the comment section. Please hit us up and let us know if you think these certain songs are Flaming Hot or Flaming Not. Because... You know, it's about the people. It's not necessarily only about us. All right, so we've got three songs that we're checking out today on Flaming Hot, Flaming Not. Uh, first tune on the Flaming Hot, Flaming Not, uh, Flashy Kumkani featuring Lee K uh, with Ikawe. Yeah. When uh, you've got I'm your... It. Of course you're down with it, but you've got wow. your personal reasons as to why. No, I heard it though. Okay. I did actually hear it, mm. right? So I I'm down with it. Um, the delivery was just on point. Uh, mm. I'm a fan of, first of all, of Lizzie as well. Oh, Lizzie, sorry, I said yeah. BK, my bad. Lizzie's Lizzie. on there, so you know, um, it's the first time I actually heard of um, uh, Flashy, right? Yes, Flashy yeah. Kumkani. He signed yeah. to MT. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's the first time I really come heard him, like, heard him on a track. Yeah. Because, you know, I've been doing my shit, so, you know, when you do get a chance to hear them, it's like, hey, yeah. you know, when you're the king of the mixtape, you got to also be on your shit <laughs> before you go on to other people. You know what I mean? Uh, so, <laughs> so. <laughs> So, I'm just saying, thank make sure God you like and subscribe. Make sure you like and subscribe. He's <laughs> dying today. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, man, I like the vibe. Also, once again, uh, Isik is coming through, yeah. you know, dropping it hard. Yeah. But, you know, the girl Lizzie on there, she's dropping fire as Switch, well. Oh, Switch, you have a lot of, like, vernac rappers on mm. a lot of your features. Yeah. Mm. Do you ask them for translation when, like, they're done? I do, yeah. I, have to, I need to know what the hell is going on. Yeah. Because, I, you know, Bella, you know, a brother in English and African shop. Mm. So I need to you know find at least me like, oh, is that what you say? That's, but like Scoop says, even if you don't understand, if you don't even hear, yeah. that click will hit you from down there. <laughs> but because the way the artist resonates on the song, um, you can like really hear that they're gelling with this. And sometimes yeah. you can also, when they do break it, then you're like, oh, damn. You know, it can be really deep. You know what I mean? So just like when you hear, uh, you know, Rise of Estrato, you want to hear, that one's for the streets. You know what I mean? But yo, okay. shout out. I, I, so I'm gonna go with um, flaming, flaming hot. hot. Yeah. So you gotta take a trip. Oh yeah, yo, this, these things bang. <laughs> these, I don't even say these things bang. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also listened to the tune. Uh, Flash Kumikan is uh, he's got this this raw energy that comes through in all of his music, and I think that's that's what I love about him is that he he he's not trying to be somebody else. He's, he's hungry. He's not trying to sound like. Okay, this is what's hot right now, so let me jump into that bag. He's like, yo, this is who I am, you're gonna take me as I is, you know? And he's raw and he's very original and and he sticks to it because that's what he wants to put out. And it comes through on the song in power as well. Um, big shout out as well to Lizzie, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, dope on the feature. I also dig the song. And I'm a fan, man. Like I'm really watching Flashy Kumikan. I wanna see what MT Records is gonna do for him. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to the joint twice. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. So, so I'll be eating. Uh-huh. I'll be eating. Shout out, B. Artwork also nice, by the way, guys. Yeah. Artwork very dope. I was waiting for you because I know you on that, you know, that hmm. I love the, <laughs> the brush stroke song. You know, on this the feel, the energy, the <laughs> Yeah, no. On it. Yeah, it's clean, it's clean. Okay. I didn't know it was MT Records. Yeah, he signed to MT Shout. Records, yeah. Shout out. Okay, um, next up we've got MXO featuring Younger Chief, sticking to the closer. Mm -hmm. uh, the song is called Toho. Mm -hmm. Did you listen to the tune? I did. Mm. It's a long time. Since you heard I from mean, MXO. From MXO, it's a long time. Um, he's still, you know, sticking to his roots, what he knows best. Yeah. Um, I, it's, 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 
you know, you know what say? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's lukewarm. Uh huh. I can't even say it's bubbling under. It's lukewarm. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, I dig the younger feature, obviously. Um, but I think Nami, I'm also. I think for me, I was just taken aback because I was like, "Even so, mm. it's been so, where you been? You know, there's not that you can't come back." I think for us, for I me, think we're out of deal. Yeah, so for me, it was just one of those like, okay, what's the story? Where have you been? What's been going on? Um, so I think I'm still trying to understand the story behind him de- deciding to drop now. Mm. The song itself, also, maybe it's still a little you know, mellow for me, still need to kind of listen to it a couple of more times. Uh, but like I said, for me, sometimes the story kind of unlocks everything else. So I'm waiting to see, I'm watching. Uh, but for the specific song, mm, for now, it's a not. I actually really like the song. Mm-hmm. And maybe, again, for me, like I was talking to Switch off air, uh, just, and you, I mean, you think, I think you know this by now, Cosmo. Like, I'm, I'm more, my ears more inclined to singing now yeah. more than rapping, you know? But I will say, no disrespect, Yanga, your MXO killed that verse. Yeah, for his me, verse, his verse was You know what I mean? Like, the inflictions, the different pockets, the flows. I really, really loved it. The, the straddling, the line between singing and rapping. Uh, I just didn't expect him to come across like that. Really, really, really took me by surprise. Uh, took me by surprise. Uh, yeah, I dig the song. So it's a flaming hat for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the last tune we are going to check out as well is Patrick Lee. Patrick XXX Lee. But you pronounce it Patrick Lee, right? Mm. Yeah. I always get this wrong. Ish. Anyway, forgive me, my brother. The song is called Don't Trust. Um, and we know the brother produces a lot for himself, um, obviously out there in his emo bag as well all the time. But I think I dig that because that's that's who I've grown to enjoy as Patrick Lee as yeah. well. Like he's very like in his feelings, he's very um, out there with the beats as well. So yeah, man, what do you th- what are you thinking about the trust? Yeah, I mean, I'm a Patrick Lee fan, and it's crazy because I was singing this song after it played repeatedly. <laughs> Don't I, come trust. On. I've forgotten it now. <laughs> totally. It was stuck in his head. It was Don't stuck in my trust. head. And I understood why you went for the melody and whatever, whatever, whatever. But, uh, Lee, I don't, I don't <laughs> like the song, dog. I, mean, I don't like it. But, I mean, I get it. But I don't think it's flaming hot, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> don't hate me. I love this <laughs> um, For me, I have heard Patrick Lee in his bag a lot more than this song. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where Scoop is kind of coming from. Like, dude, we've heard you come through with the fire. Um, I'm not hating the song, though, if I must be honest. Yeah. I, actually, I actually like it. Yeah. Um, I'm not blown away, but I do like it. I like the fact that it's a, it is a little bit catchy. It's nice and it's it's... To the to to the point, and also I think the message in the song is like, dude, just you know, do what you gotta do. Don't trust all these all yeah. these hater aids out here. Um, and Patrick Lee's always been about his emotions, always been about his um, his feelings and what's happening in and around him. And I think this is what he's going through right now. Um, so for me, I'm, st- I'm I'll give a, a, a flaming heart. It's not fire flame heart, but it's a flaming heart. Showcase. Um, yeah, I'm I'm with you on that too. You know, I think it's just yeah. It's sitting, it's sitting there. It's just sitting in the pocket. It's not like oh, like a wow factor, but it, it's sitting in the pocket. So, yeah, I'll give it a one chip. Chow it! <laughs> I'll give it a one chip. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. All right. So, um, I think we, we've we've deliberated enough for the hip hop streets, and of course, before uh, Switch gives us another drop and another bomb, uh, we're gonna say thank you for joining us. Thank you, Uncle Switch. Um, oh, you better put some bombs when I do that. Up, 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 you know, you know. Oh wow! Anyway, um, well, I can give you my tag. You know, where can people find you? Follow you on social media so at that DJ they can Switch hear SA. more of this on their own. At DJ Switches, hey, you know, I'm not on that. You know, Insta Live games like you know, sitting in bed and you know, I don't know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not about that live. But anyway, uh, follow me at DJ Switch SA. Like, comment, uh, like, comment, or subscribe. Let's you know, let's talk at the bottom. Let's talk about that mixtape. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, when they go down the wrong path, you're in trouble, bro. <coughs> um, so let's talk about the mixtapes coming out. Um, check out Rise of Istrat is coming out next. Well, yeah, actually, it's coming out. Yeah, now. Yeah, shout Guys, out. Within, man. within, within, within. Yeah, man. Um, and of course, a big shout out to Game on Africa for letting us be out here and to have a good time. Obviously, checking out some of the arcade games. Uh, maybe I'll be able to, you know compete with one of the boys and show them what I'm packing. 
when I'm working with uh, Switch, you want this heat? Yo, kick in the mix then. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Yo, make sure, yo, numbers, I'm gonna give you that tag, yo. It's the Switch up, baby. Don't forget that line. That's infamous, Tricky. you know what I mean? Anyway, Scoopy, uh, good yes. to have you back. Oh, it's good to be back, Cozzy. Uh huh, because even last week, people were like, ah, is he gonna come back? Don't worry, he's here. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, uh, please stick around. Um, keep liking, subscribing, following the page. And of course, we still got the Artscape coming up as well as Real View. Mm -hmm. What up, what up, though? Welcome to Real Views here on the podcast with myself, Ms. Cosmo. All right, so you know, I always try to focus on local content, try to focus on um, what new movies or series are actually coming up that are giving our South African actors a, a bit of a platform. What I'm enjoying the most about the local content that I'm actually watching right now is the fact that uh, people are trying to move away from like typical storylines, trying to move away from struggle movies where it's always about um, rags to riches type of story. Sometimes it's always about what's happening in the hood and making it to big city lights um, or maybe even just like a party type of movies. Not saying that they shouldn't have those types of shows. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying it's nice to kind of watch different types of movies now, which we typically watch that come from the States, but now in a South African setting. So the movie that I checked out this past week was One Night, One Police. Um, really cute movie, very um, rom-com drama type of, of movie. It features the like of um, Ulindam Toba, Sisana Hena, as well as Mutlati Mafate, and Yaniso Dez is also on the movie, as well as Donovan Goliath, who comes through as a very eccentric character. Um, and basically, these are just old school friends who've come together for a dinner celebrating one of their friends who's opened up a restaurant. It obviously escalates into one big drama throughout the night, which is what you actually want to watch. I'm not going to give too much away. Otherwise, what's the point? Um, but I do think it's really interesting to see South Africa's take on how they're going to put portray um, uh, romantic dramas and how all of those things kind of unfold to uh, finish off the end of the story. So I do think it is something worth checking out. And I think um, on this one, enjoy the scoring, obviously, because I'm a DJ. So I'm enjoying the kind of the songs that they, they used in this one, as opposed to Pearls of Wisdom, which I still feel like they need to kind of pick their socks up on. Um, but yeah, check it out. It's a nice, large hearted movie. You can check it out on Showmax. It is available there. Uh, it did come out a little bit earlier on this year. So if you have checked it out, give me some of your comments. Let me know what you think of the movie. And maybe if you think um, there is something else that I need to check out that you might have watched this past year that you think is worthy of a review. Shout out. Yeah, well, yes, Artscape segment right here on the podcast. And I'm going to be speaking about the artist Ezimbini. As the artist Ezimbini, I'm speaking about them specifically because they both have international exhibitions that were happening recently or are happening at this very moment in time. Umshita Wokkala and Zongawalangaya is a dude from Cape Town, or he resides in Cape Town right now. Ikamalake, Kukzinga Samson. And this is his work. I love the work because it makes me think of, you've always heard the story about the Anunnaki and how, uh, you know, uh, melanated people come from another realm or another space. And just the way he paints our skin, very like shiny and slimy, just the way he, he paints people with no pupils. It's just white eyes. It has like a deep, 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 deep meaning for me that also has like a sci-fi element to it. So I love the work. Then secondly, outside of, you know, usually seeing paintings and arts of work that are closely related to the black experience or black people, I love this guy's work because for the first time it was me seeing someone do work that, I don't know how they, what do they call it? I think they call it, I'll call it black existential work. And his name is Usimpiwe Nzube. This dude is really, really dope. He's residing in LA at the moment, but also has an exhibition going on right now. And you really have to find the meaning of his work for your own self because, I mean, just look at this. 
Sometimes the work is hanging. Sometimes the work has got figures in it. Sometimes he has sand in there. And look at the paintings as well. 